want to do. Right. So you get the priority deal. Um, what was your train of thought uh, with your debut album, Solo Nice? Um, my well, I have very small. Well, I guess they weren't small uh, goals, but I, I, uh, I, I essentially, you know, when I told my father I liked rap. <laughs> His, I want to quote him. He's not a bad guy. He's just from his era and a Marine and a LAPD dude. So his mentality was, oh, it's just a fad. <laughs> I remember, like, rapper never die, dad, whatever. You know, that shit. And so on my mother, on the other hand, it was like, you know, moms, you know, hey, if you like, if you like it, I love it. You can do whatever you want to do. So she's always very supportive. So my goal was, uh, I wanted to cassette or a vinyl with my face on it and my voice on it and i wanted to be able to get that to my mother and i wanted the people who i looked up to, to to tell me i was cool enough to be around them should have been thinking about i want a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of other shit too shit out I'm, I'm gonna throw that out there right there but i really did want those were my goals like they were pure and and goals. I wanted the people that had inspired and changed my life to hear me and accept me. So that means Rakim and Nas and Ice Cube and Tupac and, and Big Daddy Kane and De La Soul and I could go on and on. Uh, I wanted them to say, you are right, kid. You're okay. You're pretty cool. I wanted Dr. Dre to say, you dope. I wanted fucking, um, you know, um, uh, 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 Premier Definitely, big James Star fan. Yeah, I want the niggas to say like you don't. And uh, it's crazy. I really, I, I, and I tried to write. Uh, um, I felt like, well, I used to correct other people's rhymes, like albums. As a fan, I'd be like, "Oh, he should went here with it. He should have said this, you know, whatever." Or, um. And so what I was trying to write is what we, you know, a lot of MCs, we talk about the perfect album. Like, how do you write, like, flawless bar album, uh, subject matter, uh, storytelling, like, all this, like, a whole Olympic list of things to be, like, the illest nigga, like, Biggie, you know, Biggie kind of got busy, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn near flawless, Nas, Illmatic, certain niggas that make these albums that are, you know, experimentation like did the nigga you know is he just doing the same shit over and over again or is this nigga doing some shit like fucking with your ear and showing you something different feral minds will fuck with your ear or just do a pattern like what the fuck just happened here you know what i'm saying like that shit uh, uh, avant-garde game changing lyricism um and so that was my goal and to be honest to myself that i wanted to uh a lot of artists to this day, especially now, actually more so today, artists are one-dimensional versions of themselves. So I'm, oh, I'm the positive brother. Oh, nigga, I'm trapped. Oh, this crypty, I'm the crypt. Oh, I'm trapping, I'm trapping and trapping and trapping. Get it the money, get it the money. Throw with the back. So all these niggas is just these, 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 uh, facsimiles of themselves. Because if you trap for 10 songs, like you don't do nothing else, nigga. Nothing. You don't eat a burger. Like, tell me about the burger after the trap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, the illest niggas that did it are the ones that did it to illest me. You know, Scarface on some gangster shit. Never seen a man cry till I seen a man die. Like, take me through. You just killing niggas. You ain't told me the after effects. You ain't told me about, uh, uh, is there some regret? Are you worried about, you know what I'm saying? The homie snitching? Like, give me some, give me the bars. Let me, you know, take me somewhere. Because anybody can say, I had the gun. I shot the nigga. I robbed the bank. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, I get it, my nigga. Like, yeah, you're saying it. You probably didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? And then if you're trapping like that, you make so much money. If you really know Pablo, my nigga, you wouldn't be rapping. So that shit, okay, we're going to suspend reality with, with your magical raps <laughs> about the shit you don't do, but at least do it dope. You know what I mean? And and so uh, my goal was to 
of course, talk that shit, bravado, you know, y'all, you know, spit some shit so nasty and make little Kim blush, you know, talk, you know, metaphors. I'm like this and all that. But also to explain myself. And like I told you, I was, a, you know, ran around in the streets and watched. So it was a smart kid. It kind of, kind of, you know, Kendrick termed it well, good kid, mad city type shit. You know, just to say, you know, yeah, you know, like, uh, I am conflicted. I am really what it is, is uh, in philosophy, it would be Descartes, the duality of man. I have a higher self, the angel and the demon. Uh, sometimes the angel's like, Raz, don't do that. I'm like, no, but the bitch ass is amazing. And I just really want to know what it feels like. And I was just like that thing, you know what I mean? And so that's what I was trying to write. That's why Soul on Ice is conflicted. Very dope. Um, can you talk about sonically? You said the music was changing in 96. What was Razzcast going for sonically? I, want I know you produced. And Bird, we were like, we, you know, we, we, we came from nothing. We didn't know what the fuck to do in no studio. We bought records. The wires was fucked up. It's humming and shit. You know, that's what we, we and then some of the music we like sound like that. So we, it, we were almost... You know, if, if you had to brand it now, it would really just be a uh, 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 lo-fi. That's what they call it now. You know, if I would have, you know, if I was a white kid, I could have branded. Oh my God, I'm doing lo-fi rap. Right. But yeah, the, the, then the sonic change, and then it was like, oh, that dirty shit don't work no more. Like you gotta have the crispy snares. And I'm like, fuck, bro. Well, you know, you ain't got a budget to fucking go back in and have fucking. Diamond D redo all reprogram every fucking snare on here. We we had the budget we had, so we did the best we could with what with what they what they gave us. And as the the time changed and the sonics changed, I mean, listen to production. Look at uh, niggas are still using the same samples. They just do it differently. They change the tempo. Now it's you know the drop is just eight oh eight, but the hi hats move differently. You know what I'm saying? They're using a different kind of snare. Back then you could take the same you can pick any song in the world that you like, and I can show you a nigga in every era that flipped it. And they're all good for their time. You know, Pete Rock, that was the era of filters. You take the same record, you filter out, you just take all the highs out of it. So now it's just the, the baseline. You know what I'm saying? Then you can filter all the bottom out of it, and now you got the high of it. So now you got two different versions of the same song. You got the, the highs, the chords, and then you got the sub, you got the baseline. Um, you know, nowadays niggas will take that same thing they'll they'll add the trap beat to it thin out the, the the bottom and add 808 now the 808 is the baseline they're playing the baseline with the 808 you ain't reinventing the wheel nigga it's all the same shit it's right. the same or a different approach nigga we can have a piece of fish and do many different things with that fish you can fry that bitch you can do fillet it you can put it on some kebabs nigga whatever you like still fish nigga. it's the same thing right yeah what was some of your best memories of those sessions uh, creating that masterpiece? Uh, so I have a, I'm not trying to do like a shameless marketing, but uh, I, I did something called a few years back, I did Solo Nights Revisited. And what I had found was that the, I used to mic the booth. No, I used to mic the room. And uh, uh, <laughs> the, the reason why is because, have you ever tried? How to tell a joke or, or an experience to somebody and you can't quite communicate how funny it was because you had to be there type shit. What I found was that some of the funniest shit happens is niggas say the most ridiculous shit when they don't know they're being recorded. That's when niggas is just being themselves and that's when the magic happens. And so I, instead of mic in the booth, I would mic the room. So even my skits on the first album, those aren't skits. It's just really shit that really happened. The cheesecake and all that shit is really a conversation. And so I found one dad of all of, of at least like two or three uh, of those times I might like the room. And it's, it, it was hilarious. And then there was the, like, I literally, there's parts on this Solar Nights Revisited where I show where I'm talking about me being disgruntled with patchworks or so-and-so saying cuz when he ended up acting being a blood later on like all kind of shit it's just all kind of our life dirt you know what i'm saying next time about you know cheating on the girl all kind of shit it's just hilarious so you know it's uh you know i didn't try to bust nobody out but um yeah no it was it was 
we were, man, we were kids with an amazing opportunity that we never, uh, you know, even to this day, man, man, like I said, I was talking to Sway yesterday, and um, I mean, just the fact that I can say that, like, bro, like, this nigga fucking interviews Michelle Obama and shit, <laughs> you know, right. so that to be able to talk to him or, you know, have a joke and be talking to Premier or some shit, man, that shit crazy, bro. This, I call it, uh, you know, uh, I have lived lived bardom it's not stardom you know the star shit because you know that, you know it, it's great and i'm sure it's lots of money and i want all the money that the whack niggas got but to have integrity and respect and be appreciated for what you do um is it, amazing man and you know i've had just bardom great experiences bro like you know hey big pun getting me into fucking uh uh, the tunnel, just shit, like L shit, like I mean, just sitting with Pond, drinking Hennessy, not just rhyming on some human shit, like fucking with it, and like, bro, Big L taking me to the after hours, like real life niggas that, that changed my life, that, you know, I get it, you know, whatever, you know, you know you'd be in a club and throwing money out and popping a million bottles with some bitches that don't care, that's gonna fuck the next nigga next week, like, I get that, that shit fun too, I guess, it's only, <laughs> I think it's fun, if you're getting paid to go if you're getting paid to go pop a bottle if you the nigga next to drake doing duck lips use a clown you know and if you think that you're the 700 bitch trying to give drake some pussy you're a dumb bitch like what are you doing with your life you 35 you still trying to fuck pop <laughs> champagne poppy <laughs> you're not gonna get married and you might get a bag out of it and i mean a, literally a bag of purple so stop <laughs> stop <laughs> they make a new version of bitches every day. A new crop turns 21. I'll be trying to tell chicks that. Stop with the... <laughs> and the niggas, you, you out here, 35, tweezing your grave out, trying to do the new dance that the little nigga... <laughs> grow up, grow up, up bro. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Uh, can you talk about the importance of having almost no guest appearances on that particular album, something we're missing these days? Uh, how important was that just to um, be a solo MC and, and shine on your uh, debut album? Yeah, you know, I, it wasn't very conscious. I just, I, I be having a lot. I, I try to finish the thought. And half the time, by the time I've looked up and finished the thought, the song is long as fuck already. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know what? I, you know, I, I, it's kind of like Jay-Z. He's good at that shit. This nigga got shit he want to say. So it's really hard to include other people when you you kind of like, and then you wrote the hook, and then you ask a nigga to say the hook, and they don't want to say the hook because you it's not their thought. So you're like, fuck it, I'll just do it myself. You know, it, 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 it wasn't me intentionally trying to prove anything. It was just, I still write like that. I, I write to complete my thought. I don't, I don't write records unless i'm trying to write like a radio record and in general that's not my realm i'm not like trying to go for radio so i'm usually trying to complete this whatever the fuck is up here or right here and get it out so it's not driving me crazy and so yeah that's that's really the main reason do you have a creative process or was priority trying to uh give you direction on the album solo nights no they definitely you know the, the, the only thing Nah, A.B.I. Crockett is up in here. What up, A.B.I.? Peace. Great human being, too, man. man. Love to you, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, no, nah, Party, let me do me. Uh, do, <laughs> Curtis at Patchworks did say one thing really honest. Uh, they uh, they did try to convince me to take nature to throw it off the album. <laughs> they were like, hey, maybe you should. I was like, no, fuck you. Just, it's not going to come off. So they, 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 they. They didn't insist, but they definitely, you know, they're like, hey, maybe you might want to take that off. And that probably cost me. I'm, I'm sure I pissed off some power structures with that record. But, you know, you got to do what's true to yourself and then, you know, win, lose, or draw. Let, it, let, it, let the chips fall where they may. So I don't regret it. Yeah. Right. They talked uh, when... a more. They, they were a little, little more concerned the second time around because I didn't sell a trillion records. So then they're like, yeah, well, you need to. And I'm like, so what? No, I'm mean, still... Like, you know, I, I actually walked into the owners of the company's uh, office one day and I just said, look, man, you signed me doing an eight minute history of racism. If you think I'm going to put on a khaki suit and the jerry curl, you signed the wrong nigger. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just like, look, bro, you could just fire me now if that's what you want. Because that's not what I came here. If I came here on that, then I get it. But that's not who I am. And I'm just not going to happen here. So you should just do us both a favor. If that's what you're looking for, you should get rid of me. Do us both a favor. Yeah. Right. So when you turned the label, uh, excuse me, when you turned the album in, how did the label receive it? Which one? On Solo Nights? Yes. Well, yeah, man. You know, your first album, you can do no wrong. Everybody's going to be excited because we. You don't know the results. You don't know what the end result's going to be. Um, I was a I was a promising young artist that literally people like Rick Rubin said would had the potential and the ability talent wise to change rap. Period. And I still still believe that. I I, I do. I think I, I think I planted the seeds that affected some of your greatest. You know, they're part of my. Part, part of part of you know the people that inspired me i helped create that inspiration for quite a few of these mcs um and i'm not done like i said niggas can't write nature to threat niggas can't write interview with the vampire niggas can't write fucking uh uh shit uh i would say half of the apollo brown record how to kill god just niggas ain't niggas pin gaming like mine because i got a different depth like I can write street shit, I can write nerd shit, I can I can do fucking um, historical references, uh, um, and then I'm I, I I would say arguably I'm the I'm the first person that even brought like self deprecation into it. Like oh maybe I'm an asshole. That shit that people credit Eminem with. Like that that I, I that was the Rascal. So yeah yeah I, I think I'm you know I'm I'm a I'm I'm one uh, executive pushing a button from being fucking your favorite superstar guy. Because all that shit is just, that's just hoopla. You know what I'm saying? The talent's going to speak. And, 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 and then people, unfortunately, are reactive. If they see it all the time, then it must be good. They don't investigate because they're not uh, necessarily uh, connoisseurs of it. They're just consumers of something. So I understand that, but connoisseurs aren't to recognize what I bring to the table, and I, and I got so many fucking ideas up here. So I'm just looking forward to create more because I really do this because I love it. At the end of the day, like I just like writing. Like uh, it's fun, it's therapeutic, and and yeah, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't do it. I, I, the, the few times I didn't like it, I quit. Like, I quit at Capitol a couple of times at Priority. Like, nah, fuck you guys. I'll quit. Yeah. But and most of the time, I totally, this is my zone, man. It's just super fun. Right. When the album finally dropped, what kind of uh, reception did you get from the general public as well as, you, as, well as your peers? Uh, peers, uh, critically acclaimed, uh, industry, uh, you, know, then, you know, when things don't perform the way, you know, people want then it's what was wrong so of course shit runs downhill so we did it wrong everything we did was wrong uh but that happened on the second album too and i gave them fucking the rizza and dr dre and everything you know because now i had the ability to 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 start from zero with with, with what we had gained and uh yeah I, I never fell for that i mean my, my record you know uh we didn't go gold of course especially back then gold wasn't even you know, it was something, but it wasn't shit. So it was like, ah, oh, you didn't go gold. I forgot. We sold like three hundred fifty thousand. So they're like, oh, he, you're not gold. And I'm like, I don't know. Is that my fault, nigga? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> this is all our fault, right? <laughs> you know, I don't know. But you know, yeah, their expectations, of course, is they want the most success. Their company, they're not like they don't care about artists. They act like they care about artists because they want to make money off of selling records. <laughs> right. That's what a record deal is. It's an interest loan with a fucked up in, uh, interest rate. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, you know, it, it, it was uh, it was lukewarm from, from, from the corporation. And then the fans in general, um, they only know what they see. So if they're not seeing it on mtv or they're not hearing it on their fm station then it must not be good and or it does not exist so i can't penalize the fan i you know my company 
and I take my responsibility for whatever we didn't do to make sure that it was exposed more. Um, and some companies were better at doing exposure than others. So again, Party was never known. Party was known for putting out bus benches and, and a billboard in LA and then, uh, you know, and then and putting out Crypty Crip and then Crypty Crip be pumping like, oh yeah, or put a tank on it, Master P, and then it's gonna go. So, you know, actually, I second album, I was about to <laughs> ask Master P to put a tank on my shit. <laughs> Candy is in the building, man. The incredible cannabis, man. Salute to my brother, Cannabis, man. Cannon Briggs yeah. as well. Horseman Enforcement. Uh, the Source Magazine gave you... Yeah, what's up, Shannon? Salute. No doubt. Source Magazine gave you three mics. What was your initial thought uh, on that review? Um, um, yeah, it was disappointing. I mean, like I told you, uh, a year before, they had heard 80% of the album. So a year before, you know, you got to remember novelty runs runs out. So they had heard Nature to Threat and Order of KO and, and Gorillaz. They'd heard 80% of the album and were about to, you know, were literally going to give me six mics. But that was a year before. So then when crew was in the building, salute. No, um, no doubt. chatty -o. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. You know, so, so unfortunately, after a year, when they get the same album, it's like, ah. And then it was different regime changes. So, yeah, I was disappointed. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I felt like, you know, four would have been fine. Uh, I, I didn't think it was a three. It's not average. I just don't think you could take Nature to Threat and and some of those records and just call it an average record. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't uh, a album, you know, no matter what. You, you know, you can give it a C plus or a B or something. You know, we, we definitely could accept it. But, you know, again, that's not us controlling our narrative. Um, not to be, a, 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 you know, uh, not gonna make it overly racial, but you know, you get some thirty-year-old white kid from you know wherever the fuck from Kentucky, and then he thinks he knows hip hop, and then that's his opinion. So yeah, unfortunate. I mean, should I watch them do the, the greatest lyricist list and not mention in a gang of people, and then niggas the names some niggas that don't write their raps, niggas putting Dr. Dre. Greatest lyrics, nigga, you know, I know rap. <laughs> Probably don't write no fucking rap. So, you know, this shit, our problem is we don't control our industry in the first place, and we have too many outsiders. You know, I don't go to fucking the, 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 the fucking Olympics. Oh, yeah, that's you, M80. <laughs> yep, that was you. <laughs> 80 said, I'm 39 for Toledo. I gave someone like 84. I'm like, thank you, brother. <laughs> what up, 80? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man, but, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No doubt. Uh, looking back, uh, is there anything you would change about that particular project? And is there anything missing that we may not know about? Maybe a producer, maybe an MC that you wanted because of timing. Is there anything we don't know about this album? Um, there were some other records. Uh, we had a dope record, uh, Me and the Far Side, that we never got to mm -hmm. finish. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a song called A Few Good Men that was actually – Western Hemisphere that was really dope that Bird produced that I wish we could have got to be on the record. I wanted Bunch. He was always a big brother, and I'm just a really big fan of him. And uh, but uh, Wino would have been on because those you know they always say you know you go to the prom well you leave the prom with the people that brought you. So you know Battle Cat brought me to the prom and Wino brought me to the prom, and so. I wanted Wino to have a, a record on the album, and unfortunately, he was so busy making money with Coolio that he didn't have time to sit down. And what 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 I should have done is use one of the records we already had, with, which you know, when you're in that moment, you're like, "Oh, that's old," but not realizing it wouldn't have been old to everybody else. So, um, yeah, that those are the the other problem was it wasn't digital, so. The record was so long already. I had to. I, I couldn't fit anything else on it. Gotcha. Uh, while writing this album, uh, it's hard to think about. But did you think we'd be talking about it twenty five years later? No, man. Um, I, 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 uh, 
I knew I had one shot. I didn't know what would happen with it. And I just wanted to give up 110% for myself, for my mother, and for everybody that gave me an opportunity, invested their time, energy, beats, advice, picked me up, whatever the fuck it was. You know, um, I just wanted to say thank you to them. And, uh, and I wanted my peers to just maybe say, hey, kid, that was cool. And so that's, you know, I, I, I really, I really, I had some very pure heart goals at that time. And, and so I, I, I never, I thought I'd do three albums and I'd be it, honestly. So I was like, oh, okay, if I get a deal, and then I was like, oh, I got a deal. And then I was like, okay, I got a deal. And now we're going to have one album out. I was like, okay. And then I I had really planned on putting Solo Night, I mean, uh, Interview, I mean, Nature of the Threat on the second album. And then I, cause I was like, yeah, it's going to piss everybody off. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, hey, I put out that. And then my third album was going to be called How to Kill God. So I'd had that idea did for the longest. I remember I told Exhibit, he's like, nigga, you can't do that. I was like, nigga, that's my third. I would really piss everybody off, and then it'll be over with. So that was the kind of the game plan, was the like, I didn't know if anything would, you know, last or if people would listen, but I knew I was going to go out with a bang, like uh, <laughs> my, my, my metaphor is always the dappy duck, when he, when he's like, now I'm going to explode, and the nigga blows up, and it's just the, the duck bill in the eyes, I was going to do one of them. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the album turns 25 this Friday. Any plans for uh, reissuing, repackaging a tour? Any plans for Soul on Ice, the 25th anniversary? That's insane, because you're you hitting me. Just I didn't know that. So uh, <laughs> crazy. Um, what I wanted to do is what uh, L did when he did uh, Elmatic, like live band it and, and re, re spit it. So we're definitely shooting a video. Uh, shouts out to Gifted Glitch. We're shooting a video for Nature of the Threat. Just we call them like the retro series. So I want to shoot a video for Nature of the Threat. So we're going to shoot that video. Um, but I'd like to just redo the entire thing with a live band and just re spit it. I think I, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time before. You know the shit is not twenty five, but that's a that's a goal. I'd love to do that. No it's, doubt. Thanks. Actually, package all three because there's Solo Nice Two and uh, uh, IP Intellectual Property is kind of part of a volume of it. So I'd like to package all three of them as an experience. Right. right. Uh, later that year, I believe after the album, uh, you appeared on this cover. Do you remember this? Fuck yeah, man! And uh, my man Glitch just made me a poster of that. That's just awesome. Very dope. Uh, can you take us back to that uh, moment? Yeah, that, you know, uh, I think I think I had a chain on by then. You did. <laughs> I, had, I had my little Jaguar chain. I was popping. I might have had a Rolex too. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I had the Rolex yet. I got my wave side to side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I was. Uh, you know, I I had uh, I graduated. You know, for me it was always these steps. So uh, by that time it's like okay, I'm getting used to this fit that oh, oh I'm an actual signed artist this is what I do this is what I'm going to be doing for a living this is my job before that I was like yeah I don't know what the fuck's going on you know whatever so by then I'm like oh, okay like it's what I do you know we go to the office and you know we and, you know, on our tours and you know whatever so I was just just uh getting comfortable in my skin about being a professional artist by that point Right. Very dope. Uh, Rascals, I want to thank you for uh, spending this moment with me. Again, happy 25th anniversary. Any last words for uh, your supporters who've been down with you since day one? I want to thank everybody that jumped on here, period. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, the, the people toil more. I see you too, brother, with the dogs, bro. We gonna get it. But, uh, you know, just everybody, man. I, I, I'm just very grateful for this opportunity. I'm living the dream of uh you know just being able to, to to do something i love i encourage everybody um to try to do something you love because um i don't think anything sucks more like i, I feel like america sells you 
the illusion of stability to, to fucking be in a rat race and put up with their shit. Um, and, and don't be afraid to dream and try to fight for something. You know what I mean? Plus, we don't know when we're going to die. So, motherfuckers, sit there and, and, and work. Uh, what up, Lano? I see you, my, my, my guy. Um, yeah, I just see some people that, that they life waste away. They're miserable. And you ain't guaranteed shit. You work for these people and put up with their shit for 20 some years. Now you got hypertension. And before you can retire, you'll be dead. And you can spend all your good years miserable as fuck. So I just encourage people to dream the dream, man. And, you know, shit. Nothing's guaranteed, but uh, but death. <laughs> the only thing is guaranteed. So you better lit this motherfucker up while you can, bro. That's what I tell people. No doubt. Now, anything we can look forward to from Rascals in the future? Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, uh, the most important thing is the vinyls are out for the Horseman album. We got two different sets. So they're double vinyls. There's the uh, Razzcast Killer Priest one, which is gold, Bhutang, and then I'm Pestilence is green. And then we also have the Corrupt Cannabis, and that's Warm Famine. Corrupt is blue, obviously. And then Cannabis is red. So make sure you guys go 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 check for the vinyls. That's at fatbeats.com. And, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody that supported that project. Um, we charted shit, M80, me and M80, uh, exec produced it, produced it, exec produced it. And uh, coming next, we got the gutter. So I'm looking very for, oh, shit. Last thing, uh, well, not the last thing, second to last thing, my homeboy, uh, Swifty McVeigh from D12 put together a project. So uh, he pulled me and Yuck in. So we rhymed on, on a few of the records on the project. And uh, it's called Long Story Longer. So that's uh, that campaign starts on the first for his his project. But we got, um, we got, yeah, me and Yuck did like a third of the album. Like we rhymed on a whole bunch of them, went out there and fucked with our Detroit people. So shouts out to Detroit. But what I'm next with me, is the gutter album so the gutter is me having from my deep and rj pain so that's what i want niggas to definitely uh get ready for that shit because we're about to hurt these niggas right. yeah i got to witness you not too long ago on stage with the legend uh krs1 in the bronx oh, so yeah. i want to thank you that yeah. was there <laughs> i love man salute to krs1 he's like you rhyme razzy which is crazy to have your fucking fit your hero call you by your, like your pet your nickname like Razzy. I'm like fuck yeah, I'm rapping, nigga. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> in, in the Bronx, like that was crazy, man. Very dope. Before we get out of here, can you uh, shout out your social media where we can keep up with you at? Yeah, well, uh, right now, just right here on the gram at r a s underscore k a double s, and thank you everybody, all the everybody that came in and hopped in and and, and, and Checked me out, man. I appreciate y'all. And thank you for having me, brother. Absolutely. I'll see you again in the near future. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, love, brother. All right. Salute.